Okay, here we go. We are making bone broth. One of the easiest things to make. The first time I made it though, I read the directions like a thousand times because I'm a direction person. But once you make it a couple times, then it really is truly easy. First, the vinyl choice for today from Magnolia Club. Something's in there, almost fell out. Nathaniel Rateliff, his new one. And it's a white vinyl album, kind of cool. This one's a little chill compared to his last album, but it's all good. So again, Magnolia Record Club. Very cool to introduce you to a lot of new artists. Anyway, okay, so basically, this is my roaster chicken that I devoured the other day with a couple other things, including the chicken enchiladas that are in the oven baking right now. I already kind of separated all the bones because I like getting all the bones exposed. And the key to this bone broth is two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. From what I understand, that's what brings all the deliciousness out of the bones, like the bone marrow or whatever. Um, so I had a couple of carrots. Hold on, that's not my good knife. That's not my good knife. I had a couple of carrots and I literally just chop, try not to chop my finger, get as much of it as I can and dump it in. Oh, this is a bag of frozen chicken bones that I had from a couple other roasters. I keep it in the freezer until I have two or three chickens. I already filled the pot with water, about three fourths of the way full. Oh, this one I didn't rip apart yet. I know it's kind of gross a little bit, but whatever. It reminds me of my mom, like when she used to cook and they really did a lot of stuff that we just don't do anymore. Anyway, ripping that apart just to expose as much bone as possible, hoping that we get more of the bone goodies. I also have some celery. Again, oh, put that in there. Just chop it up and throw it in. So super easy. I had a leftover onion. You can use whatever kind of onion you have. Garlic, whatever. Throw it in. I had a little bit of parsley left over. Throwing that in. Um, I like thyme. <laughs> I like thyme. Who doesn't? So, thyme is kind of a pain in the butt when you need it for another recipe to just like go like this and get all the little pieces that you need. But the great thing about making a broth is just throw it in there. Oh, I hope you can see how. Look how awesome that looks. Can you see how awesome that looks? All oh, the color. What am I forgetting? The apple cider vinegar. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in there. I'm gonna simmer it for 24 hours. At night, when I'm sleeping, I'll put the lid on it most of the way. I don't know why it just kind of freaks me out to put the lid on. I, it's just what I do, I don't know. And then you let it simmer for 24 hours. When 24 hours is up, I will come back and let you know how I go about putting it in mason jars and stuff because there is kind of a key to that that's very important that I learned the hard way. Um, if you have dogs, this is a pretty fantastic treat. I'm gonna stop recording and show you what my dog does with this and my other dog with this. Sam, why don't you put it over there? You gonna come up for air? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm in your way. The bone broth that I showed you yesterday has been brewing, simmering for 25, 26 hours. Oh my gosh, the house smells so good. It was so awesome to wake up to the smell. And by the way, thank you, Alan, for, <laughs> for videotaping this. I can't keep it on the tripod because... It uh, what? broke. So we're kind of just holding... Well, no, I know it broke, but you have to follow me to the... Are you like... Am I in the picture or is it just the soup? No, just the soup. And Lulu. Hey, Lulu. My dog loves to sit in that spot right when I need it the most. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I do. I am draining this 
into my super duper colander strainer. And we have to watch out because sometimes so much of the food gets in there that the broth actually sprays. Uh, remember I told you, oh, look at all that goodie. Mm. If you really love your dogs, what I do is, hi, here. Oh. If you really love your dogs, what I do is I will let this cool off and I pick the chicken off the bone and they get even more of a treat. So anyway, let that strain a little bit. You can either just pitch it on the garbage, compost, do whatever you want. Hi. Um, but anyway, so what I do is just let that sit and now I take all of this deliciousness and, oh, I forgot to add the salt and pepper. Typically add the salt and pepper a little bit later. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so I am bringing this back after straining all of the chicken bones and the veggies and everything else. I added some salt and pepper, by the way. Uh, typically add the salt and pepper just a couple hours before I'm ready to strain it. Strain and pour, baby, strain and pour. So I've got my five mason jars handy. It's about how much it makes. Oops, I always spill. I give a really good stir of the pot to just make sure I stir up all the yumminess in there. I don't fill it all the way to the top either because uh, I've learned if you fill it, fill it too high to the top and then freeze it, then it's going to crack the jar. Or if you put this right from the counter after pouring into the freezer, it will also crack your mason jars. Does it sound like I'm peeing? My son's over there, he thinks that's funny. It does kind of sound like pee. Anyway, so typically what I do is after I pour it all, I let it sit in the refrigerator for a day just to cool it down get it to a cooler temperature before I freeze it all I keep at least one in the refrigerator for use with so many different things too many things to tell you right now because we'll be here forever and my son says I talk too much anyway right Alan yeah it's true yeah it's true I talk too much what do you call me Kathy talks a lot Kathy talks a lot that's me all right, so we're almost done. This is so, so good. I like to drink it, not necessarily in the summertime, but especially in the winter with a mug. I just pour it into a mug and drink it like that, and it is just so good. So here we go. Look, this is basically like free bone broth, and you know how expensive it is in the stores? And I get five jars out of basically using two to three bones chicken, bones from chickens, and throwing in carrot, celery, onion, you know, whatever I threw it. It's basically free bone broth, and it is so good. You can't even compare to the bone broth in the store. This is so much better, so, so much better. So anyway, I'm gonna let it sit, kind of get to room temperature a little bit, and I will share on the website some of the recipes that you can use with this. It's so good. I know, I'm getting the cue to Okay, so that's it. Enjoy your bone broth. Mm.